now it's time to take one step further and uh, add a little bit complexity in over free artos esp32 based projects and what we are going to do we are basically going to use esp32 and uh, as a web server and we are hosting it to read uh, the thermistor from uh, the analog input pin and so we you will learn how to read an analog input in the esp32 how to convert the analog input into a temperature from a thermistor and how to interface i to c lcd and how to uh, display the readings of a temperature onto the lcd board you will learn how what is a thermistor uh, this is typically the symbol of a thermistor and we are going to use the ntc uh, thermistor 10k and uh, this is a, a temperature graph versus the resistance versus the temperature in centigrade uh, high temperature means low resistance and low temperature means high resistance so that's how a typical thermistor graph looks like and uh, we will uh, start from a basic program where we'll simply read a 10k thermistor and display the result over the lcd then we will add a web server to it into a free artos based environment so let's get started so let's talk about the uh, thermistors thermistors are usually of two types and uh, these are ntc and ptc uh, NDC mean negative temperature coefficient which uh, decreases the resistance as the temperature increase and PTC is positive temperature coefficient which means it increases the temp uh, resistance as the temperature increases. So the NTC is widely used in the temperature sensing uh, applications for thermometers, digital thermometers, applications in appliances temperature control and automotive temperature sensing. On the other hand, the PTC type of uh, uh, thermistors are used as a fuses for circuit protections, self-regulating heaters and overload protections. Now let's talk about the uh, temperature reading methods from a thermistor. Uh, there are usually uh, different uh, methods available in the literatures but uh, the most widely used are these three kinds which I am going to mention. The first one and the most common type in uh, embedded systems is a lookup table where you create the values of resistance and uh, also the uh, temperature and these two are looked up from a table this is most common in 8051 kind of microcontrollers but with the advanced microcontrollers like arduino uh, now we have more advanced ma uh, mathematical equations available so we can use a less accurate called the beta equation reading method and uh, we can use this for reading the thermistor. This beta equation is less accurate. There is also a polynomial equations. These equations are also more accurate than the beta equations. Um, but these are more complex to implement. So we have a perfect combination which we are we are going to use in today's tutorial that is stain heart equation uh, this equation is most widely used in uh, thermistor reading of ntc in the temperature uh, controllers and temperature meters so that these are the most common methods available now let's look where i got these readings from and there is a paper about the algorithm execution time and accuracy of ntc thermistor based temperature measurements in time critical applications uh, which is obviously we are going to use in r2 space methods which is time critical um, 
embedded system and uh, this paper addressed the challenge of selecting a suitable method for negative temperature coefficient uh, tem thermistor based temperature measurement in electronic devices so uh, the first of all we need a signal condition conditioning circuits obviously we need that to get a temperature dependent voltage being connected to the microcontroller analog input so that's overall hierarchy we are going to implement and uh, they mentioned the method lookup table principle polynomial approximation uh, b equation and uh, stain hart equation resistor value which converts it into a non voltage uh, uh, which are dependent to the temperature here you can see uh, the running circuit we have connected the thermistor with the esp32 board and uh, we are giving the power supply from usb and this is typical the connection and uh, the temperature reading on the i2c lcd as you can see the temperature increases and uh, the temperature goes back now let's look into the code we use two uh, header files the wire and liquid crystal i2c library and uh, these are some coefficients which we used for uh, Steinhardt uh, uh, equation the thermistor pin is analog 32 pin if you want to look into the circuit diagram here is a 10k thermistor uh, with the 10k um, pull up resistor and then we have a thermistor which is connected to the uh, d32 which is the analog input of esp32 um, and uh, we connected the scl and sda scl is the pin d22 of the esp32 board and d21 is used for uh, the sda pin and uh, these two i2c pins are connected to this i2c module and that is connected with the 16 by 2 lcd so that's a, no a normal circuit diagram which we are using for uh, this video then we mentioned the series resistor which is obviously the 10 kilo ohm resistor then the nominal resistance which is also the 10 kilo ohm uh, which is over uh, thermistor resistance and the temperature if on at the 10k when the thermistor is at 10k resistor the temperature is 25 degrees centigrade and the b coefficient is this uh, this b coefficient is known from the data sheet of the ntc thermistor uh, then we mentioned the lcd address for i2c and uh, number of rows and columns or uh, we are using 16 by 2 uh, but just uh, stick with that in the setup we initialize the serial port we begin the wire and we initial on the 21 and 22 for SCL and STA we initialize the LCD and we on the backlight and print the temperature then in the loop we implemented the stain heart equation and in that we are simply reading an analog voltages from analog channel and then we convert this voltage into uh, this raw EDC values into the voltage by multiplying it the value to the 3.3 because 3.3 is the maximum uh, voltage available on the ESP32 and because it is a 12 bit we have to divide it by 2 4095 and with this equation we get the voltage on the raw EDC and we can convert this to thermistor resistance by simply uh, uh, dividing the series resistance over 3.3 divided by voltage minus 1 so this equation will give us the resistance value uh, in the voltage divider we use that resistor value for stain heart equation calculation and we do that by dividing the thermistor resistance with the nominal resistance which is r over r0 and then we take a log of it and after that we uh, divided by the one over beta multiplied by the log of the r and r0 uh, this is the b coefficient and then we convert it with the one over um, t0 which is a nominal temperature which is 25 degree centigrade in our case and then we simply uh, divide it by one and by subtracting the 273 we convert this kelvin temperature into the centigrade and we simply uh, print that on serial and we also uh, print that on lcd and then we take a delay that's a simple code for reading the temperature with the thermistor or with the stain heart equation 
on the i2c lcd display in the esp32 the same code will be applied for any arduino base but we will take one step further with the esp32 capabilities and convert it to into a web server based temperature readings and also will implement a free artos based implementation so let's dive into that we will get the IP or uh, and on that IP in the browser we will get the loading state and then we will get the reading of the temperature from the ESP32 module and this is the temperature on the LCD as you can see and this is the temperature which is sent to the web server as you can see we can uh, increase the temperature of the thermistor and we will see the changes happen on the lcd and the temperature is continuously increasing with the body heat and uh, yes so if we, we reboot it it will uh, start and uh, it will give a wi-fi is disconnected and it try to reconnect the wi-fi and uh, when it is connected it will display the ip address of the uh, connected port and uh, you can use that ip address in your browser to read the temperature readings on a web page now in the free artos implementation we will create tasks and for that we created usually the three tasks and uh, the main task which will read uh, the temperature is a temperature task and uh, then we have another task uh, which is a wi-fi task and it is responsible for wi-fi connection and disconnection and uh, then we have another task uh, which is handling the communication and display properties we call it lcd task so it will be responsible for handling the lcd uh, display the web wi-fi task and the server is simply running its own thread where we are serving a web page hosted onto the esp32 the thermistor reading and we have uh, three tasks that we mentioned the, the here is the three tasks we created the wi-fi task is running on core one and other two tasks are running on core uh, zero we uh, start the event flag on the wi-fi and then we begin the wi-fi we created two uh, semaphores one is mutex and other is binary semaphore for temperature and lcd handling then we simply initialize the lcd as before and if we go to the lcd task we have to wait for that first of all let's see uh, uh we create an event for a web server so let's see how we handling the server we simply uh, use the web server dot h header file which is used for the esp32 and we create a server on port 80 and then we uh, created a function for generating a web page uh, this is uh, using a raw literal uh, string and we are simply uh, creating html page and we use the utf8 and then we set the viewport uh, and we in the style tag we are simply using a body and font family and uh, we align the text into center and changing the background color then we have a temperature div we are changing the font size into a bigger font we are changing the color and then we are um, align, uh, adding a 50 pixel margin from the top in the body we have a simple div for a temperature and inside the script we are fetching uh, the value of the temperature from the server which is hosted inside a esp32 and we are fetching the temperature and then uh, returning a text response inside that text response we are getting the document dot get element by id and we are uh, taking a temp display id and then we are changing the inner html into a uh, temperature which we get from the web server then we have two functions of the server one is to handle root and one is to handle the temperature the handle root method will send a 200 response and will send an html response we generate that html response from generate web page function then we have a handle temperature root which is returning a 200 status with a text plain text and we simply create this text from a temperature c variable we convert that into a string reading the temperature is done with a simple read temperature function this function is similar as you have seen in the previous code which is implementation of a stainart equation
Then we have a Wi-Fi event which will handle two cases. One is when I, we uh, Wi-Fi got an IP which is mean it is connected and second is when it get disconnected. We handle the SEMA4 mutex and we clear the LCD and display the indication that we um, Wi-Fi gone disconnected and when we got an IP we take the SEMA4 and write on an LCD that Wi-Fi is connected and uh, this is just to indicate that we are using uh, how to use a sim for uh, to avoid the race conditions otherwise we can simply handle this lcd inside lcd task so um when I IP is connected we have to display the IP for five seconds and then we start uh, serving the server on a handle root function and temperature uh, function then we give back the semaphore so if we come to the temperature task we wait for the binary semaphore which is that temperature start semaphore and once we have that semaphore uh, we can start reading the temperature and uh, if Wi-Fi is connected we are going to use this otherwise we will just wait for the delay obviously this semaphore will uh, not make any sense here anymore we can avoid that as well and we can simply use this variable as well but just in case to make sure how to use it we can have a uh, wait for this semaphore to take and then we will start in the task otherwise you can also put this into inside this Wi-Fi loop while loop as well so we will uh, see another tutorial where where we will explain the proper usage of this semaphore this is just a slight in, uh, introduction uh, in this tutorial series so you can uh, get an idea how the semaphore works uh, then we have an LCD task where we, we are using two line LCD so we will prepare two strings for line one and line two we will maintain the last state of both lines and if the lines are not uh, equal to the previous lines we will update the LCD then we will wait if we have to show the ip uh, we show it on the connected that ip is connected and we get the ip from wi-fi dot local ip function otherwise we will uh, display the temperature and if the last lines are not equal to the pre uh, current lines we will simply take the sima for for lcd updating and we will uh, clear the lcd and display the both lines on the lcd and then we give the sima for back and we update the last line states to the current Line and we take the task delay so that's how the code is work in free artos environment let's give a short idea of what is uh, mutex and the purpose of mutex is primarily used to protect the shared resource from concurrent access for example when we have a two tasks we and they both share a same resource in our case is lcd we want to avoid that both task is using the same lcd in a same uh, same time so we want to avoid that we use a mutex for that and then it ensures that only one task or thread can access a critical section of a code or a shared resource at any given time so uh, how it works a task must take or lock the mutex before accessing the shared resource the take method is basically locking the resource so whenever a, a mutex is taken no other um, thread can use that resource anymore once finished the task gives back or unlock the mutex so that's how it works if another task tries to take the locked mutex it will be locked until the mutex is released uh, think of single key restroom only one person can inside at a time the key is mutex and it ensures the exclusive access to that restroom the semaphore are used for controlling access to shared resource and for task synchronization uh, they can be used as a single event between tasks how it works semaphore maintains a counter task can take decrement the semaphore or give incremented the counter is zero the task trying to take the semaphore will be blocked uh, the types is binary semaphore uh, can have zero or one value used for mutual exclusion or signaling method and uh, the counting semaphore uh, could also be generated and they can have value greater than one it is used to control access to a limited number of resources uh, uh, think of a parking lot with a limited number of spaces the semaphore counter represents the available spaces the cars task can enter take if the there is a space or wait if it is full uh, 
you can also think of a factory line one task produce an item and gives a semaphore and another task consumes the item and takes the semaphore this is signaling the key difference between two is mutex is primarily for exclusive access to a shared resource semaphore semaphore is used for resource control task synchronization uh, ownership a mutex tip, typically has an owner the task that logged it while a semaphore does not contain the ownership so that's all for today